Hey guys, welcome back to the Ride Ride Waxing channel. So, on a very nice Solomon time machine with my one of my favourite bindings of all time, the flow bindings. Now, just up here, I've got a flow binding and just up there, they are my old flow bindings. I've gone to Burton Step-Ons purely because I'm old and my back kills and I can come off a lift and click, click and I'm off because I normally snowboard with skiers and they always try to leave me behind. Uh, so I needed a fastest solution. And this was the fastest solution originally at the time before the Burton Step-Ons. These are really cool. You flip this down, the heel goes in, this clicks in and stays in position all the time. And you come off a lift, you scoop your boot in, you pull the lever at the back, which locates up to the back of your boot, which obviously gives you your support, then to turn. It literally, you pull up to a, a chairlift, flip that down, fold that back and scoop your foot out. Brilliant, like I say, this simply just clicks in and locks in and then to reverse it, you simply would just click it back over on itself and then you can adjust this on how tight you want your boot to fit. But a really, really good system. That's my snowboard that's just fell over, not a customer's one, because um, I've got to service that, so that's coming up as well. Um, so yeah, awesome, absolutely awesome. Um, so I'm gonna have a detailed look at this time machine. It is in very, very condition. We're gonna polish up the top, but like always, I'm gonna video the settings just so we know exactly one where they go back for me. But more importantly, um, for the customer at any point, if they need to take the bindings off when on the mountain, they can refer back to this video and they know exactly where they are and also where the actual bindings are set up to. So I would say this, this actual board here is a goofy stance because I ride regular, so I'd stand this way. They stand that way facing forward. So this is a goofy stance. Uh, we've got 15 degrees on the rear and I would say we've got a two, three, six a six degrees on the front foot. So, quite interesting. But anyway, let's pop you the hand, have a detailed look at this bad boy. So here we are, one time machine. These are the flow bindings. Um, that's the setting there on the front foot. And you use this marker just here. These normally go up in increments of three. So it would be uh, obviously three, six, nine, 12, 15. So each line class is as a three degrees. So this is two markers in, so this is six on the front foot. Oh, uh, crab grab, uh, stomp plate just there. And we've got a 15 degrees just there on the rear foot. Obviously the stance, two centre, two outer, two outer, two centre. So they kind of reverse those around. And that way then the board and the binding, you don't get too much heel and you don't get too much toe overlap. That's something you've got to consider depending on how wide your feet are. If you would need a wide board or a narrow board. Awesome little dope sticker just there, which is cool. So yeah, what we're going to do, I'm going to quickly pop in the stand. We're going to unscrew these and then we're going to detail the top and then we'll flip it back over and have a look at the base of this board. Okay, so we've gone for the directional markers, which are basically just here, here, either side kind of the cross pattern, as you can see with the circular in there. I've obviously blown out all the residue, so these have been Loctited in, and as I always will do, I'll always Loctite the screws back in again. You can see the Loctite just in the base of that one. And again, we've gone for the standard fixed. Now you can adjust depending on how tall you are, depending on how close you want your feet. And sometimes people like to make a directional board, which this is, so that means you've got equal distance from the the actual nose and tail of the board to the centre. You might want to make it a directional board so you move everything back by to a hole or two. And that way then you've got more, you've got a shorter tail and a longer nose for powder. But again, that is all adjustable. And if you always want to adjust your board, if you go to most stations, they always have a screwdriver set. Now the base of this board is in very good condition. Um, we've got a bit of rust on the rails and stuff, which will sort all out and we'll get great definition. It is a little bit dry, and the camera makes this area here look a lot darker than actually what it is in person. Um, a nice white base. It's always hard to get a shine on a white base because it's quite, uh, absorbs a lot of light. But like again, the rails aren't too bad. We've got a few little nicks and knocks just there, but other than that, no P-Tex, which is lovely. So we'll do a full base scrape on this, getting off this dead material 
and we'll give it a good clean to get all this area up here and then we'll uh, lay some fresh wax down so yeah what a lovely board really nice board solomon so let's pop you in the stand let's stick some tunes on and let's get to work here we go <laughs> So, one Solomon time machine has been sat now for quite some time. The wax is lovely and cold because it is freezing outside. Um, I put it in my hot room, purely and simply to keep the pores of the board open, and we penetrate that heat all the way through to the top core. And if you want to know how hot to get it, obviously you do get a proper iron that you can adjust the temperature so it obviously does melt the wax at the correct. Mine's 120, um, and obviously if you get it too hot, obviously it'll start smoking. But you want to make sure you keep the eye moving across the board, laying that wax down, feeling the underside of the board, and you'll feel the heat come all the way through. And that's when I put it in my hot room, and basically it takes ages to cool down, shutting those pores, trapping as much wax in as possible. And obviously then, um, I'm a great testament to this because I've gone away for a week and um, I've had my board waxed on machines and stuff, and by day two and by day three, um, pretty much the wax is gone, the board's really, really grey, um, and obviously there's lots of kind of like dead material showing. I've skied and snowboarded really, really hard. Go across to my La Plan video on my channel. Um, powder, hard days, ice days, sunny days, bluebird days, whiteout days. Um, and we skied hard for a whole week, and my board has still got quite a lot of wax on it, So, um, which I'm really, really pleased about. So, it is very important to lay the wax down in the correct manner. Then it's to take it off. I've got my sharpener. Basically, I sharpen that up to make sure I've got a lovely sharp edge. And then we basically go down the board, take it off all the wax, like so. And we take all the wax off, and then we use a detailed brush as horsehair to nylon to a very, very soft bristle brush on the drill. And we basically polish that surface up. Then we put the liquid Teflon on on the rails purely and simply to stop any corrosion between now and when it hits the slope. Now this board's going out to the French Alps this weekend, lucky thing, uh, I think it's the French Alps, um, the Alps in general, um, to be shredded. So I'm going to get on, stick some tunes on, and let's get this board polished so it's super fast. Here we go. <laughs> So there we are guys, one Solomon time machine. Um, that top coat has come up amazingly shiny. I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, and we're gonna basically get the bindings put back on and detailed. And uh, yeah, that hourglass on the bottom of that board is really, really popping. You can see there the reflection. Again, it's very hard with the white, but what we have got is really sharp rails. We've done and tipped those ends in and they are They are razor sharp, which is really, really good. This thing's going to absolutely fly. Um, we've got liquid Teflon on the rails as well, so they don't rust and corrode. But we've got great definition in this colour area here, um, going into that beautiful hourglass. The base of this board is in really, really good condition. This customer really does look after his board um, and has been very fortunate to dodge all the rocks, which is really, really nice. There's a couple of little marks here. We didn't need to put any P-Tex down. Um, and I didn't want to base scrape too much um, on the space of this board, really, because we put the directional brush back through the board. So we've got directional in there. Um, and yeah, just all around. What a lovely, lovely board. And it's come up so well. I don't know if you can see there on the shine. Really, really pleased with this. So there we go, guys. Another snowboard. I've got to get the bindings put back on. Again, it's another good reference point for me as well to make sure they go back in the same place. We've got 15 and we've got... 
six degrees um, and we'll get those flow bindings back on which are just truly awesome bindings and if you haven't seen or heard of flow bindings go across the flow and check them out they are really really good like i say these things here have done me proud over the years i just basically wore them out and ended up breaking them hence why i went over to burton step-ons but guys that's it another solomon done here in the rider waxing workshop guys go across the channel hit like hit subscribe share with your friends check me out on instagram and uh, yeah until the next board which is going to be in about 10 minutes for me it's going to be a late night i will see you soon